Hello, this is a tutorial on the basics of Keycloak Part 3, specifically on OAuth. In this tutorial, we're going to use OAuth third-party grants. To do that, we're going to register an OAuth client with the Administration Console. And then we're going to configure a third-party application to use that registered client. The demo looks like this. A third-party application is, is registered as an OAuth client. An OAuth client is the same as a regular application except that after the user enters in their username and credentials, an additional grant page is displayed to the user. This grant page will ask the user if it grants the third party um, the role mappings, the permissions that are assigned to that particular user. So if uh, the user has us user privileges, that OAuth grant page will ask the user if it grants that third party user privileges. So this is an extra authentication step that OAuth clients require. So the browser will go to the third party application, get redirected to the authentication server to do a grant request. The user will log in, get redirected again to a grant page. It'll accept the grant, be redirected back to the third party application. The application will get a token, behind the scenes from the authentication server then use that token to invoke on a secure RESTful database service to obtain a listing of products that will display back to the browser. The first thing we have to do to enable this demo is we have to go to the Keycloak Administration Console. So let's do that. So I'll log into the Administration Console. And you see I'm in the demo realm that we created in part one and two of the basics tutorial of Keycloak. So to create an OAuth client, I'm going to click on the OAuth clients tab here. And you see that we have no configured OAuth clients in our system. I'll click add OAuth client. I'll specify the name. The name will be third party. I'll enable it, then I'll save it. Next thing we want to do is specify the credentials of the third-party OAuth client and the password will be password. Click Save. Oops, enter in different passwords. Hit Save. Next thing we want to do is we want to define the scope of the OAuth client. Scope are the roles that the OAuth client is allowed to request from the user. Here you see on the scope screen that we have um, these roles available to us for our OAuth client to ask permission for. So we're just going to click on the user role and we're going to assign that to the OAuth client scope. So when, uh, when this OAuth client requests uh, a grant it can only ask for user, user privileges from the person logging in. That's it. We have configured our OAuth client in the administration console. So the next, next thing we have to do is uh, we actually have to configure our application. So let's go to our IDE. And you see in the unconfigured demo, it, we have loaded this up into IntelliJ here and there is a project called third party here in this directory. If you open it up you'll see that it is a Java servlet project and the first thing we have to do to enable OAuth here is to create a keycloak JSON file like we did for um, applications in the previous tutorial. So keycloak.json and like applications, we can get a template configuration file from the administration console. So let's go back to the administration console. So you see, if I'm, I go to my third party OAuth client, if I click on installation here, it gives me a template for a configuration file. So I'll copy that, and I will go to the Keycloak JSON file and paste that. We don't need all these configuration switches here. Um, we, do, we don't need the public key. Uh, we don't need that. Oh, we do need that. Uh, we need 
um, to specify the password for a third party. But we don't need the rest of these configuration switches, so let's delete those. Save that. And that's all we have to do to configure it. Uh, we've already implemented all the code here. Let's actually step through some of it. Key, Keycloak has a helper class that you can use to help you with uh, OAuth client um, redirects and, and things to obtain an OAuth grant. If you click in on the bootstrap file, this uh, initializes uh, this helper class so that you can use it in your application. The bootstrap class here is a servlet context listener. This is um, something that can be registered with the uh, the web container and that it will run when the servlet container starts up. When it starts up, it'll call the context initialize method. And within that method, we create our helper class instance, the servlet OAuth client. This is a key cloak specific class. We configure this client and the way we configure this client is we want to load its configuration from uh, the keycloak JSON file that we just created. And it uses this uh, metadata to, to initialize um, our servlet OAuth client instance. Then we start the client and then uh, we set a servlet context attribute to point to the, this client instance so that our application code can get access to it. click on the index.html file, this is the entry point in, into our application here. You see it's a very simple HTML file and it has one link, redirect.jsp. If you look at redirect.jsp, all it's doing is calling um, the redirect method on this application uh, class right here. The redirect method uh, obtains the servlet OAuth client that we initialized in the bootstrap class. It gets that from the servlet context. And it calls a simple method called uh, redirect relative on that servlet OAuth client instance. That's going to specify the, um, the page we want Keycloak authentication server to redirect to after we've uh, logged in. And when that gets invoked, it's going to send uh, a redirect as an HTTP response back to the browser. So after the user logs in and you go through the grant page, uh, the key cloak will redirect you back to the poll data JSP page. So let's look at that. What that is going to do is it's going to invoke the database service in the background using a REST invocation and get a string list of products that it's going to display in HTML. Let's look at that. The uh, the get products method, it's going to um, get the servlet OAuth client instance from the servlet context attribute. Um, it's going, going to get uh, the token that was granted to this OAuth client by calling the get bearer method on servlet OAuth client. Then it's going to make an HTTP request to the backend REST service to obtain a product listing. To do that, it uses this token to populate an authorization header for, the, for this HTTP request. The value of the author, authorization header is bare space and then the actual token. Then you see here we execute this, this request here, we get the response back. We um, serialize, unserialize it, and we pass it back to the poll, ba poll data JSP and display display it. That's it. Let's actually see this in action. Before we do that, though, we do need to actually uh, build and deploy our application. So I've opened up a console window here, and you see that I my current directory is the unconfigured demo project that we just that I just showed you in our RDE. I do an LS here. You see that there is a, a third party project. I'll go there and to build the project I do maven 
clean install. Then I do maven jboss as deploy. So the install actually uh, compiled and built the, the web archive and jboss as deploy is going to deploy that archive to the to, to the wildfire instance that we're running in the background. That wildfire in instance is actually uh, from if you looked at tutorial part one and two, it's actually the uh, key cloak authentication server. So I'll deploy that. And after we deploy that, we can go back to our browser and try out the demo. You see that um, I was logged into the administration console, but my session timed out and Keycloak logged me out. So that's a good thing. So, the entry point into our third party application is localhost port 8080 OAuth client. Click on a pull data link and I will be directed to the Keycloak authentication server. Enter in my username and password. Hit login. And now I get to a grant page. This is the auth grant page I was talking about before. It tells me that uh, third, the third party application is requesting access to user privileges. So basically it's asking for the user role. So this string text here is actually the, the description of the user role. So if you want to change this text, change the description of the role that that you want it to be displayed, displayed here. So I, cl I click the accept and I'm redirected back to the third party application. I got my token, I make a rest call to get a product listing and I display it. That's it.